So far, we've been working with some pretty basic selection techniques, and we've been making pretty crude selections. Okay, so nothing very precise. I want to show you a more precise method called Select and Mask. And this is particularly good for cutting out portraits. Cutting out portraits is one of the most you know, common tasks in Photoshop, especially as, as a designer, you might be cutting someone out from their background to put them on a clean color background, or maybe you want to cut someone out and put them into a new background. Um, just something that is really common and you'll be doing a whole lot. Cutting out portraits can be especially difficult with really detailed hair. Okay, and this is a subject that has very, very curly hair, and this is gonna create some issues because you can see how much detail there is in this hair. You can imagine that, you know, working with something like the polygon or lasso tool, trying to cut out each hair individually would, you know, not be possible. That's where, you know, the select and mask tool comes in. There's also parts that are a little bit blurry, and this is because this photograph is shot with a low depth of field style. And so, you know, the eyes are perfectly in focus, but as we go further back in depth, some of the edge hairs here are a little bit blurry. Okay, so again, that's gonna cause a, a little bit of a problem when we go to cut this out. There's gonna be limits to how precisely we can actually cut this out. Okay, so let's go back to our regular zoom and let's use select and mask. So in order to get to select and mask, all you have to do is select any selection tool. So the marquee tool, the lasso tool, or the quick selection tool, they all have this little button at the top that says select and mask. Okay, so you just wanna go ahead and select one of those tools and click select and mask. And when you click that, you'll go into this other mode here. It's kind of like a dialog box. And we have a bunch of uh, tools that pop up over here and you know a new toolbar with a few tools over on the left side as well. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that there is sort of this transparency that is happening over the image. And this is because there's a few different ways that we can view our image. And the default is called the onion skin. And the way onion skin works is they're sort of transparent in the place that we are not cutting out and full strength in the place that we are, are cutting out. Okay, so you know I'm gonna go ahead and select this top tool, which is actually the quick selection tool. Okay, so this is the same you know, behavior as the quick selection tool when you're not working in select and mask mode. So I can go ahead and create a larger brush. Okay, you can see by default it's on plus, and I can just start selecting. You can see as I select, again, that onion skin is gonna show me the parts of the image that I'm selecting. Okay, so right off the bat, I did a pretty good job of you know, selecting her and, and cutting her out from that background. Okay, so that is one way you can view you know, how the selection is going. You can also click on this and change to a bunch of different other options. And one that I really like is overlay. Okay, so with overlay, you have a color that you can select. Um, a lot of times it's good to select a color that's not in the image, so you can really easily see what's going on. Um, and then you can also change the opacity of you know, that overlay. Okay, so you can see that with onion skin, it looked like this was a pretty good selection, but overlay is kind of painting a different story here. And you know, although the quick selection tool did a pretty good job of getting the general area right, um, there's definitely some issues along the edges. Um, so this is definitely far from being a perfect selection. Okay, and if you turn opacity up, you can see it over a totally you know, uh, opaque background. And if you turn it down, you just sort of get that transparency effect. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom in and start cleaning this up. Um, one thing we can do is use what's called the edge detection um, section. And this works particularly well for certain types of portraits. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in really far on this hair. Okay, let's go ahead and turn this opacity up so we can see what's happening. You can see the pixel grid um, in play here. Okay, so basically what edge detection does is it allows us to define a certain radius and in that radius, it's going to try to figure out where the edges are, okay? So it's gonna use an algorithm to determine those edges. Okay, so right now it's at zero pixels, so it's turned off. But as I start turning this up, you can see how it's starting to you know, detect where the edge should be inside of the image. Okay, so once I turn it up to 55, 
um, it went 55 pixels into the image and it's trying to figure out where that edge is. Okay, and generally speaking, you want to go up just a little bit because if you go up really high, let me go ahead and zoom out. Okay, if you go up really high, you're going to create you know areas like this where you can see that that selection is kind of creeping in to the actual you know clothes. Okay, so that's going to create some issues. So a lot of times you want to just do a few pixels, but it depends on the situation. Okay, so you can kind of feel out for for how that works. If you click on smart radius. What it's going to do is it's going to decide how how much to go in and you know use the detection. Okay, so if I turn that on, okay, it's going to find areas that, where it thinks it needs more detection. It's going to increase the radius for that area, and then in areas where it doesn't feel like it needs a lot of edge detection, it's going to turn the radius down. Okay, so that's going to be a variable setting that is going to be determined by Photoshop. Generally speaking, I don't use Smart Radius too much. Okay, so that's how edge detection works. And you can see it's doing a pretty decent job. Again, if I turn this off, um, we just sort of have this sort of feathered edge. But when I turn edge detection on, okay, to 10 pixels, you can see that it tried to kind of go in 10 pixels into the image and sort of find out where those hairs are. Okay, so it's doing a pretty good job of sort of figuring out that edge. Um, and edge detection goes along with the second tool. Okay, this is called the refine edge brush tool. And the Refine Edge Brush Tool works the same way as edge detection, but in this case, we're sort of painting the edge detection on ourselves. Okay, so with edge detection, when we go in eight pixels, it's automatically gonna find the edge of the selection, go in by eight pixels and apply edge detection to that area. But with this brush, we can actually paint in, okay, and I'm telling Photoshop that I want to do edge detection in this area. Okay, so I found a zone where there was a lot of white that was creeping through. That was the background color. So I'm sort of painting in edge detection in that area to, you know, tell Photoshop that, look, this is an area that I want to, you know, do the edge detection on. Okay, there we go. So now I'm starting to get a little bit more of that edge detail from the hair. And I'll paint a little bit in here as well. Okay, so if I zoom out, you can see that I'm starting to get, you know, when I paint over this area, for instance, see how it just calculates and figures out where that edge is? It's, it's actually really amazing, and I can't tell you how challenging this type of thing used to be before these tools. Okay, so now it just kind of happens like magic, and it does a pretty good job. Um, within limits and like I said you know since especially since we're working with sort of this blurry area um, there's only so much you can do um, particularly with the blurry hairs it's really going to struggle to detect where that line should be drawn and the red is really great for helping visualize you know how that selection is coming along and remember, you can always change the red to a different color as well. Okay, so you can see in here we're having a little bit of an issue. Let's go ahead and turn down our opacity. So this might be a, a situation where we actually want to switch to a different color since the subject is wearing sort of a reddish kind of pink blouse or jacket. Okay, if we switch to kind of a blue color. Okay, now we can really clearly see um, what parts of the red are coming from the jacket and what parts were coming from the mask. Okay, so since the blue is a totally different color, we can really see the interaction between those two colors. Okay, so the hair there looks pretty good. Um, you know, it looks like there's a good amount that's not working up here, so let's go ahead and paint over that. Tell Photoshop to, again, kind of refine that area. I don't want to chop out big chunks of her hair. Okay, there we go. So the hair is looking pretty good. Um, definitely have a ways to go on the blouse. And this particular blouse is is particularly hard because of the way this is shot. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the opacity down on our mask here, just so we can see the original photograph. And you can see on this, on this side, there's a pretty clear line between the jacket and the background. But on this side, there's kind of a lot of light spill that's coming in. It's very bright on this side. And... So it's almost hard to tell where the jacket ends and where the background begins. 
Okay, so that's going to be a particularly tough area for Photoshop to figure out on its own. If I turn back this opacity, you can see that on this area, on this um, side, where the jacket is more defined, it's done a pretty good job. But on this side, it's done a really poor job. And we're going to have to help Photoshop out a lot to fix that area. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and, and zoom in on this area first. We'll kind of start with the easy zone. Okay, and we can try using this refine tool, but you can see that it's going to have limited success. Um, again, because the blouse is pretty similar to the background, there's not a lot of contrast, so it's not doing a very good job. So what we can do is use the tool right underneath that, which is just a simple brush tool. Okay, so the brush tool will allow us to just brush in areas that are part of the mask, or if we hold down option, we can subtract areas from that selection. Okay, so I can really quickly go and hold down option and just select, subtract out that part of the jacket that you know shouldn't be there. Okay, so we can literally just brush out any issues. Okay, and just make sure we have a really clean selection. Okay, so that looks pretty clean there. I'm pretty happy with that selection. Let's go to the other side. This side's gonna be a little bit more challenging. Okay, so right off the bat, that definitely shouldn't be there. This whole um, area has like some blue in it. Okay, so I'm going to brush over that. And you can, you know, again, use whatever size brush you want. So I'm holding down Control and Option um, to change this brush. So you could go to less um, hardness if you want more of a feather or more hard of a brush um, and change the size as well. Okay, and the same thing can be done by going up to this brush tip as well. So you can change those settings in here. Okay. And in situations where you kind of have a blurry edge because of the way the photograph was shot, you might want to add a little bit more feather to your brush to kind of simulate that edge. Okay, so we want to make sure there's no blue kind of creeping in there. Let's get a smaller brush. Just kind of paint over parts of that hair. Okay, oops. And once again, we're going to have to kind of recreate this shoulder. Okay, so we want to make sure that we have that jacket all selected. So that we're getting a pretty good selection here. Okay, and, and I'm actually getting a little confused about where the jacket is, so I can always turn off off this overlay to see where that jacket is. And you can see I actually didn't get enough of the shoulder in here, so when I turn that off, the shoulder actually comes out to here. Okay, so I actually need to go in here and, and get more of this shoulder. That's actually part of the jacket, so I need to make sure I include that. There we go. Okay, and once again, it's hard for me to tell where that's happening. Okay, so if I turn this down, you can see that this part is where the um, jacket ends. Okay, so I'm going to want to paint along that line there. To get that jacket. There we go. Remember, if you ever go a little too far like that, you can always just take the hold down option to get the minus brush and just minus that out. Okay, once again, I'm going to turn that down. Okay, so I can see that the jacket is curving out this way. Okay. There we go. So this could probably be refined a little bit further, but... Oops, that looks pretty good. Okay, cool. So um, that should be good enough for a selection. A couple other things I wanna show you really quick. And let's go ahead and turn this opacity up. Okay, so these global refinements can be helpful in certain situations, particularly if you're getting a lot of fringing on hair, you can shift the edge in. Okay, so this is gonna blindly shift that edge. See how it's just sort of constricting the 
um, the selection a little bit more. Or if you go the other way, it's going to expand the edge. Um, so if you end up, you know, with a lot of fringing, like if it looked kind of like this, you could always shift the edge in to kind of get rid of some of that fringing. Um, you can also smooth or feather your um, selection. So if you want it to be kind of blurry, you can add feather. If you want to add smoothing to kind of get out little kinks, you can do that. And you can also add contrast. Okay, so if you want your um, edge to be like more defined, um, adding a little bit of contrast can help with that. Okay, and then lastly down here we have output settings. So this is how you want the final um, selection to be outputted. Okay, so if you output it to a selection, you can just create a layer mask, but you can also just select layer mask or new layer with a layer mask. So these are some different options that you can do um, for the way that this gets outputted. So for now, let's just go ahead and keep stay with selection and then click OK. Okay, so when I click OK, you can see that I have um, the marching ants that are telling me where the edge is. And then if I just go ahead and click on new layer mask, Okay, now I've created a selection out of, you know, this portrait. And if I create some sort of background color behind this, so I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and go to solid color. Okay, and, you know, we could put it over top of white. Um, that looks pretty good. And we could also, like, you know, maybe choose something, you know, kind of like her jacket. So if I wanted to go over kind of a peach tone, um, that could look really good as well. Um, just note that the further away that you go with the background color from the original photograph, particularly in a situation where you have, you know, um, really detailed hair like this, you're going to run into some issues. So just an example, if I go to pure black, um, you can see that our selection was far from perfect. And again, some of that blurry area is really starting to show up. Okay, so cutting, you know, her out of her background and then putting her over a black, you know, uh, background color could be really challenging. And if you wanted to make that happen, it might even be better just, you know, st starting with a different photo. Okay, so let's go back and use kind of our peach tone. And then this image is ready to go. So for this exercise, I want you to start with this image. Um, this is definitely going to be a pretty challenging one. And I want you to cut out two portraits. So the second image is your choice. So go ahead and go on the internet and find a portrait or use a portrait that you have. Um, cut out that image. Um, just make sure you're working with something that is high resolution and high quality so you can really get in and do some detailed selection work. Okay, so when you're done with those two portraits, um, save them as JPEGs and then you can turn both of those in for this exercise.